Hello and welcome to Top Gear's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff that I'm supposed to tell you but usually forget. And welcome to the Audi e-tron GT, the RS e-tron GT in fact. Um, this is going to be a first drive review but there is a bit of housekeeping before we get going. First of all, props to Audi UK for getting this car into the country. This is a German car, left-hand drive meaning we're one of the first people in the entire world to get our hands on it. But we don't have long, just a few hours. So it is going to be a, a, a taster, a very much a first impression. Further down the line, we'll do proper road trip in this thing. We'll take it on track. We'll do all of that good stuff. But for now, we've got just a few hours in and around Milton Keynes and London. Glamorous. Um, We've managed to snaffle a few extra hours with the car actually by agreeing to shoot into the night. So if it gets dark halfway through this video, you know what's going on. So yeah, we'll try our best. Plenty of time to have a proper poke around because it's just a fascinating, fascinating car this, isn't it? Lots of detail to go through. The first is the colour. This is a new colour, tactical green. No relation to tactical chunders, I'm told. It actually looks quite good. I thought it was going to be a sort of flat green mulchy army surplus store kind of colour but it's not it's got a bit of ping to it a bit of metallic to it you're certainly going to get noticed if you go for this the other thing is the front end um audi's famous for having these enormous single frame grills these gaping mouths at the front um, but this you don't need the cooling you don't have the same cooling requirements as you have with an ice car so you have this block this block of body coloured material across the front with this rather nice waffle pattern embossed into it. Looks fantastic. Looks a bit different to what we've been used to. Uh, and then the headlights. So these are full on Dr. Evil spec. LED matrix laser lights. Freaking laser lights. The benefit of that, well, when you're on full beam, uh, the throw is about twice as far as before. Also, they just sound cool. Coming around the side. Now, 21 inch wheels. On this car these are the biggest wheels you can get for the e-tron gt it's a press car you're going to see a theme in a minute they've thrown all the options at this one including carbon ceramic brakes here the charging port now on a Taycan, you've got that fancy thing where you slide your finger under there and it electronically reveals itself it's all very fancy unless it gets frozen shut um, here just a more conventional push and open evidence of audi cost cutting well, wait until you find out what the price is later on. Now, I should also mention these creases up here above both the wheel arches. When we first saw pictures of this car when it was first revealed, these are the things that stood out. The fact that it's got some proper muscle, some proper stance straight out the box. The Taycan's more of a kind of pebble smooth, elegant shape, isn't it? This Audi's a bit meaner. I like it. Speaking of options, this one's got a couple of individual add-ons, so carbon effect wing mirrors i think the jury's out on those but i do like the fact that they've got real wing mirrors not cameras for wing mirrors like you get on the uh, e-tron suv there are options on the e-tron suv carbon fiber roof looks fancy supposedly lowers your center of gravity but honestly when you've got a slab of lithium-ion battery under the floor i'm not sure it actually makes that much difference and this car has something called the dynamic pack plus on it so you've got four wheel steering you've got the electronic rear diff you've got air suspension everything we need to assess this car properly and if you come around the back well this is probably the car's best angle for me it's the car's best angle that is a very pretty rear end and i don't say that very often especially this tail light that runs the full width across and i'm sure that will do all sorts of fancy dancing around put on a proper light show and you lock and unlock the car you've got a pop-up spoiler in this section here and just overall it's just a really elegant piece of design isn't it now audi is pitching this car as the name would suggest as a more comfortable gt car as opposed to the sports car that the Taycan is um, it's fast just not quite as fast as the porsche if you like and that plays out when i get my invisible measuring tape out because it's slightly longer than the Taycan, slightly narrower than the Taycan, and slightly taller than the Taycan. But honestly, looking at it here, in isolation, you wouldn't know. It looks. It's a good looking car then, 
but is it a practical one? There's a slightly bigger boot than the Taycan, 405 litres in the back, another 85 litres in the nose. The back seats are perfectly usable for grown adults or half-grown ones like me, and the dash design looks fantastic, largely because Audi has retained some physical switch gear. More on that in a bit. In terms of charging, the 800 volt architecture means, like the Taycan, charging up to 270 kilowatts is possible, or, in perfect conditions, 65 miles added in just five minutes. The interior then. What do I like and what do I not like? Well, I like the fact that it's simple, that Audi has gone back to its roots and it's created an interior that kind of combines the future and the past. It's like a, a greatest hits in here because you've got your screen behind the wheel, your virtual cockpit, you've got another touch screen in the middle of the dash, but you've got physical buttons down here for your aircon and your heated seats. Uh, and then below these vents, another bank of real switches for turning your traction control off and selecting your drives mode. And um, I like this little slidey lozenge bar that you've got down here for selecting forward, backwards and uh, neutral. And this bar that runs across the dash here, just a little design touch, just reminds you that this is a car from the future. And also the quality, it's off the charts. It should be in an Audi. Just all the switch gear and all the metal it uses is absolutely on point. What don't I like? Well, rear visibility isn't fantastic, if I'm honest. My view through the rear view mirror is like looking out of a letterbox. Uh, and then there's prices. We've got to talk about them eventually. So Quattro, which is the entry level car, that costs 80 grand. This is the RS. This will set you back 110,000 pounds or thereabouts. And you can even add a pack on top of this one called the Carbon Vorsprung Pack, which is basically all the options you could possibly want bundled into one. And that will set you back 133,000 pounds. Ouch. The headline facts are these. You can't get this Audi in rear wheel drive only or with a smaller battery like the Taycan. It's 93 kilowatt hour and twin motor quattro four wheel drive only. Your choice is whether you go for the standard Quattro model with 469 brake horsepower or this RS version with 590 horsepower or 637 horsepower on Overboost, making it the most powerful RS model to date, albeit in brief bursts, capable of 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.3 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles an hour. Let's talk about that big headline number, shall we? 600 and 37 brake horsepower because I just think it's a bit of a cheat. You only get it in launch control. You only get it for a burst of two and a half seconds. So let's face it, most of us are rarely, if ever, gonna use it, which means this car, 99.9% .9 of the time, is a 590 brake horsepower car, which is absolutely fine. And by the way, anyone thinking that this RS is 0 to 62 time of 3.3 seconds or, 3.6 if you're not using launch control is slow because that's what half a second behind the Taycan turbo or 1.3 seconds behind the latest Tesla Model S plaid well I think you need your head examining because what really matters is how fast a car feels and this car feels honestly about as fast as you can comfortably or you would comfortably want to go in a road car anything more would just be painful. Moving on to range. This RS version will do 293 miles on a charge, according to the WLTP test. The Quattro version does 10 miles more. And you know what? That's great. Plenty for most people. The problem is you've got Tesla promising 400, even 500 miles now on the newest Model S's. So the Audi's range will still be a limiting factor for some. You just have to acknowledge that when it comes to range, and charging infrastructure, Tesla is still miles ahead of the competition. But look, a Tesla doesn't drive like this. The ride on these massive 21 inch wheels is absolutely magic. The grip is phenomenal. The speed that you can carry through roundabouts in this thing is quite frankly a bit naughty. I'm told by the press release that the center of gravity on this car is actually lower than you get in an Audi R8 and I can believe it, I don't doubt it for a second. The acceleration, well, it's fairly ballistic, but you already know that, you've seen the numbers, you've 
read reviews and seen videos of the Porsche Taycan before, but the best way I can try and describe it is this sense that you have a deep, deep well of acceleration at your disposal at any time. So revs don't matter, gears don't matter. You just twitch your right foot and you teleport forwards. It's astonishing. Okay, so the steering is good it's quick it's direct it's everything we're used to from a modern audi it's not full of feel but then i didn't expect it to be more interesting actually is the brakes because like the Taycan, when you first brush them that deceleration that you feel isn't the brake pad squeezing against the carbon ceramic disc no that is the regen that's recouping energy back into the battery but audi's done a really nice job as they did in the Taycan, of making that feel natural and progressive so as you squeeze it a little more you decelerate a little bit more um, if you really stand on them that's when the pads grip the discs and well we're going to need a racetrack to see how the car behaves when that happens uh, the body control it's really good it's absolutely astonishing really considering this is a 2.3 ton car 2.3 tons i can't believe i'm saying that but it just doesn't feel it um, it may well get found out a bit more on track but as a road car it just feels planted and and agile and nowhere near that heifer lump of a curb weight that it's got potentially a little bit more body roll than you get in a porsche Taycan, but i'm picking its straws i'm using my memory here my memory isn't very good um, refinement yeah we're cruising along the uh, inside lane of the m25 here we're doing about 63 miles an hour it's really quiet it's really smooth it's all the good stuff that we're used to for electric cars you've got special acoustic glazing in the windscreen this car has optionally got it in the side windows as well it's not as quiet as you know a bentley or an s-class or an a8 it's got slightly wider tires there's a bit of road noise from there but it's a very comfy car it's a cruiser ironically it's a car that you could cover very big miles in if you didn't, you know, have to stop and charge all the time. Speaking of refinement and sound or lack of sound in here, you do have something called the Audi e-tron sport sound, I think. So if I go into my drive settings, individual mode, and then configure my individual settings, drive system dynamic, because we want it sharp as possible, suspension comfortable, because I'm getting a bit old, and the sound profile. So you can have subdued, balanced, or dynamic. So you select dynamic and it creates this quite interesting, slightly sci-fi sound, very similar to the one you actually get in the Taycan. I quite enjoy it. I mean, it's not a throbbing V8, and for some people that'll be a problem. They'll probably get quite upset about that on the internet, but I like it. I'm on board. Now for some bad news. Despite the Taycan Cross Turismo being revealed pretty much on the same day this video goes live, there are no plans for an estate or Avant version of the e-tron GT, which is mildly disappointing, as Audi is the fast estate company. As I said earlier, there's also no plans for a simpler rear-wheel drive version of the e-tron GT, which is also a bit of a shame, and it means that the video of us doing donuts in this around the Sainsbury's car park is just gonna have to wait a little bit. But this is a hugely, hugely impressive car. The big question is, is it better than a Taycan? I think we're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to wait until we get them together. It's too close to cool. Right, that's the review done. And to make up for the brevity and rush nature, here's a bit of a bonus. We caught up with Marquez Brownlee, YouTube's number one tech expert, to get his thoughts on the e-tron GT and EVs in general, plus right. some news. Now, for anyone that's thinking out there, when did Marquez Brownlee become friends with Top Gear? Well, actually, we've been emailing a little bit over the last few weeks, and Marquez is going to be doing a few electric car reviews, a few hybrid um, car reviews in Top Gear magazine, and um, eventually on topgear.com as well. So check that out. So I've been driving the Audi e-tron GT, but I know that this is a car that caught your caught your eye on social media. You were straight on Twitter with your with your opinions. What, what did you think about the e-tron GT when you first saw it? So don't get me wrong. I think it's a gorgeous car and I'm, I'm jealous that you've gotten to drive it because it's probably a lot of fun to drive. Uh, 
I just think there's a bunch of different ways to attack uh, presenting electric cars to a new audience. And on the high end, there is like the performance way. And on the economy end, like I'm, I'm test driving Volkswagen's ID4 right now. That's the other side of that coin. So when I saw the uh, the e-tron, I was like, all right, it's obviously high performance. It's not it's not the highest end ever. Like we obviously just saw what Tesla's done with Plaid, but I was a little bit shy on the numbers. I was like, this is not a lot of range. This is it's going to have the same charging network as the Taycan Electri America. It's good. But uh, I want great for a hundred something thousand dollars. So I was I was a little shy on it, but uh, I think it's probably still very exciting. And also, it's yeah. a sports car. It's fun. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, it's based on the the same platform, the same underpinnings, a lot of the same technology as the Porsche Taycan. I know you've driven the Taycan and you liked mm -hmm. it. And what I loved is that you um, you totally got that. All right, it doesn't have the charging infrastructure and the numbers of the Tesla, but it drives the quality of the interior, the way it drives. It feels like a proper sports car. You know what? I'll I'll give it to some people because a sports car has never really been about efficiency. So the fact that it doesn't go 300, 400, 500 miles is it's probably the best they can do right now is just win at everything else. Driving dynamics, interior quality, do that great. And they'll catch up on things like the software and the high tech parts that Tesla excels at eventually. And so range will come. So I'm not, I wouldn't make the trade off because I do road trips. I, I use the supercharger network a lot, but I could see how someone would make that trade. See, what baffles me, OK, is that this this bat, this um, Audi has a 93 kilowatt hour battery. Now, how are they going to with this Plaid Plus? How are they going to get the 500 mile range? Is it is it all battery management software? Are they going to put an even bigger battery? How do they how are they that far ahead of the competition? So I think that Plaid Plus will be a bigger uh, number. Uh, I remember when I asked Elon about the Roadster, which is the first like Plaid powertrain they were going to make, that has a 620 mile promised range. And he told me it was a 200 kilowatt hour battery. Yeah, I read that too, 200 kilowatt. And so yeah. when, I, when I hear Plaid Plus is going to have the same Plaid powertrain in 500 plus miles, and it's not coming out till you know seven, eight months from now, to me, I think that's a, that's a different battery tech. And that will probably enable larger capacity, whether it's 200 or 150 yep. or 120, whatever it is. I think that's going to be bigger than 100. But also their efficiency, they, the way they get those numbers, which they might not get like 500 truly mm -hmm. when you really drive it like you want to. But they're they're really good with that drivetrain efficiency. A lot of that is software. A lot of that is aero. And they've gotten so good at that, that that's become their thing. That's why people, you know, sort of yeah. crown Tesla as the king there. Look at this. We started off talking about the Audi e-tron. That's the, <laughs> that's the car I'm supposed to be talking about. And we end up talking about Tesla. It always happens with electric cars. But yep. look, um, I can't wait for you to have a go in this Audi as well. I mean, it's so fast. On paper, it's 0-63.3. So compared to the, the Plaid, you know, that's, mm -hmm. it, it's quite a way off. But the reality is, and I say this in my review, what matters is how fast a car feels. So you, we yeah. can sit here and trade numbers all day, but when you're sitting in the car on the road, it's that feeling yeah. and it feels as fast as you could ever want to go in a road car on a road. Like it's just any more than that, you start to feel sick. So <laughs> yeah, have, have we, do you think we've reached that point with this 1.9 uh, time for the Tesla? That, that's kind of it. Let's not go any further. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much faster than that. I mean, it's Probably already a physics the question. <laughs> yeah, the Roadster allegedly will do more, but that's not even like traction. That's not even tires to the ground. That's like like compressed air. Like that's yeah. a crazy next level thing. So yeah, we're me, definitely give me, pushing. Just, give me just a little update on this because I'm so there's supposedly <laughs> going to be some compressed air booster on the back of the Roadster that adds to the performance. And that's not a joke. Right. I mean, that's what he keeps saying. So again. If we go back to what Elon's been tweeting, this is what he's been telling us is uh, compressed air, replacing the back seats with compressors, you know, license plate flips down, compressed air shoots out the back, and you can go faster than the limits of rubber on the road. Yeah, and flame uh, throw out the front as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just outfit it with everything at that point. Uh, crazy, crazy to see that in the hands of regular people. Oh, wow. Well, wow, it's an exciting time. Look, Electric cars, they're coming so thick and fast. There's so much to talk about. It's great um, to be able to talk to you. It's great that we've, you know, you're going to be driving a few cars for Top Gear. I'm so excited. Um, 
we'll keep it interesting we'll keep sending you the you know the real world stuff like the id4 but then you know yeah let's see if we can get you in some hybrid ferraris and stuff like that as well yeah they're both important they're both, both important. important you know obviously yeah. yeah um but look fascinating stuff marcus thank you so much always a pleasure thanks for having me yeah catch you soon